afternoon. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm on the team and these are today's headlines. Arab leaders gather in the Egyptian resort town of Shed Meshik to discuss the crisis in Yemen, where Saudi-led coalition troops are pressing ahead with their strikes on Houthi targets. Heavy bombings shake the Yemeni capital Sana'a for a third consecutive day. At least 54 dead are reported. And former Prime Minister Saad Hariri reacts to Hezbollah chief Said Hassan Nasrallah's speech, saying the Lebanese are treated to a storm of hatred against Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states in response to the decisive campaign launched against the Iranian inf infiltration in Yemen. Arab leaders have gathered in the Egyptian resort town of Shen Meshikh to discuss the crisis in Yemen, where Saudi-led coalition troops are pressing ahead with airstrikes on Houthi targets. Security was tight in Shen Meshikh as the leaders from the Arab League, representing 21 nations, opened the summit, which will discuss possible creation of a joint Arab military force, a sign of a new determination among Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and their allies to intervene aggressively in regional hotspots. Gulf diplomatic officials said Arab airstrikes against Iranian-backed rebels in Yemen could last up to six months, voicing fears that they could face retaliation at home by Iran. Yemeni President Abd Rabbo Mansour Hadi has called for a Saudi-led military intervention in his country to continue until Shiite Houthi rebels surrender and their leaders are brought to justice. Hadi left the Arab summit in Egypt for Saudi Arabia with Saudi King Salman, but his foreign minister says he will not return to his country for now. And on the ground in Yemen, explosions rocked Aden's largest arms depot, sending flames and smoke into the sky above the southern Yemeni city. There was no immediate word of casualties. Residents have reported looting at the depot in recent days as Shiite Muslim Houthi fighters challenged forces loyal to President Abd Rabu Mansur Hadi for control of the south's largest city. At least 54 people have been killed in three days of fighting between Houthi rebels and rival militia in Yemen's main southern city of Aden. Sana'a's airport remained closed after warplanes launched an attack on the airport and the Yemeni capital's Al-Dulaimi Dulaimi airport military airbase early on Thursday. The airport authorities said they were hoping to get the airport operational as soon as possible. Hezbollah leader Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah has launched a fierce tirade against Saudi Arabia last night, saying its military offensive in Yemen was doomed to fail. He also vowed that the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels will emerge victorious from the Saudi-U.S. aggression. In a fiery speech broadcast by Al Manar TV and other local channels, Nasrallah said there was still a chance to reach a political solution to end the bloody conflict in Yemen, which has opened a new front in a long brewing rivalry between Riyadh and Tehran. He blasted Saudi Arabia for spearheading, for spearheading a coalition of 10 countries to launch a campaign against Yemen while failing to carry out a similar action to save the Palestinians from Israeli killing and repression in their decades-long struggle with Israel. Speaking on the second day of the Saudi-led military assault against the Houthi rebels, Nasrallah said Hezbollah will have joined the coalition if its warplanes targeted Israel instead of Yemen. He accused Riyadh of launching the war in an attempt to regain control over Yemen and rejected Saudi claims that Iran posed a threat to the kingdom and other Gulf states. Nasrallah, who has voiced support in past speeches for the Houthis in their power struggle in Yemen, called for the aggression to stop and for the resumption of talks aimed at a political solution to the conflict. In some of his harshest comments to date, Nasrallah also accused Saudi Arabia of sending suicide bombers to Iraq and of creating the ISIS group. Nasrallah's remarks drew a quick response from former Prime Minister Saad Hariri, who said the Lebanese were treated to a storm of hatred against Saudi Arabia and Gulf states in response to the decisive storm campaign against the Iranian infiltration in Yemen. This hatred only deserves to be ignored because it is the outcome of anger, frustration and tension, Hariri wrote on his Twitter account. The future movement leader, however, pledged to pursue his party's dialogue with Hezbollah because he says the country's interests remain a priority. He stressed that Nasrallah has been insisting for years on prioritizing the interests of Iran over those of Lebanon. He noted that Saudi Arabia had offered Lebanon and the Arab countries goodwill, peace and honest brotherly support, whereas on the other hand, others are spreading wars and conflicts, clearly referring to Iran. Army Commander General Jean Ahwaji and Defense Minister Samir Mu'bil have met over the military's most recent success in the confrontation with Islamist fighters. 
The meeting discussed military operations on the outskirts of the northeastern border town of Arsal in light of a speedy operation in the area that allowed the army to seize positions used by jihadi militants to infiltrate Lebanon. A statement released by Mobile's media office said that talks also focused on military positions along Lebanon's borders and noted that the military is fully prepared to thwart any aggression waged by militants. Today's meeting comes one day after the army announced an operation on the outskirts of Arsal where it seized full control of some positions used by terrorist organizations to infiltrate the country and wage attacks against army positions. The army established a military presence in the area and has linked the new positions to other army posts stations stationed along the border. Health Minister Waula Bufaud has accused the Syrian regime of committing assassinations in Lebanon, expressing fear that the presidential crisis could lead to a constitutional vortex. In an interview with the pan-Arab daily Ashad al-Awsat, Abu Faoud pointed out that there are expectations that Assad's regime will further interfere in Lebanon through various means, which begin with political intervention and end with assassination bids. The minister said the aim is to incite sedition in Lebanon. Maybe Assad is delusional and thinks he can control Lebanon. Abu Faoud, who is loyal to progressive socialist party leader MP Walid Jumblat, lauded the efforts exerted by the Lebanese army to preserve the country. Concerning the presidential vacuum, Abu Faoud expressed concern that the matter will impact Lebanon's political system, accusing the allies of free patriotic movement leader MP Michel Aoun of obstructing the election of a new head of state. He considers MP Henri Helou a consensual candidate for the presidency, pointing out that the PSP is holding on to him. A large blaze erupted at a Syrian encampment in the northern region of Akkad. The National News Agency says the blaze was caused by an electrical wire friction and more than 10 tents were completely burned. The encampment is located on the outskirts of Qibbet al-Shamra. Residents worked on extinguishing the fire and evacuated the women, children and old people. Italy's top court clears Amanda Knox of the 2007 murder of British student Meredith Bircher. That's coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. Iraqi special forces have advanced on central Tikrit as U.S.-led coalition planes join the largest offensive yet against Islamic State militants holed up in Saddam Hussein's home city. Iraqi forces could be seen gathering at the Diyum area in western Tikrit as artillery and missiles pounded the city. Reports say the troops entered the Shishin district in southern Tikrit and the northern al qadisiyah neighborhood after the U.S.-led international alliance carried out airstrikes the previous night. The campaign was slowed last night by clashes with Islamic State militants that claimed the lives of four and wounded 11 soldiers. Most of the Iranian-backed Shiite paramilitaries, which Iraqis call the Popular Mobilization Committees, have opposed the U.S. airstrikes. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius is join, joining talks on Iran's nuclear program in Switzerland and said he wanted to achieve a robust deal. Fabius joined U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif ahead of a Tuesday deadline to agree on a historic deal that could see Iran scaling back its nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. The French Foreign Minister said he was insisting that any deal including mechanisms to ensure that the Islamic Republic complies with its commitments. Officials say German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier also arrived in Lausanne today and held a working lunch with Kerry and Fabius. China and Russia's foreign ministers, the other two countries involved in the long-running talks, were reportedly expected on Sunday. So far as the civilian use of uh, nuclear is concerned, Iran has all the rights, 100 percent. But so far as atomic bomb is concerned, the answer is no, because we don't want any proliferation, nuclear proliferation, which is very dangerous for obvious reasons. We want an agreement, but this agreement has to be robust. There has been progress on the one hand, but there are still obstacles that we have uh, to uh, overcome. And I hope that uh, agreement would be possible, but it has to be a robust agreement. That's the position of France. Merci.
Yeah, Polling stations have opened in Nigeria as voters prepare to elect a new president in what is being seen as the closest contest in the country's history. Today's election delayed for six weeks while security forces attempted to subdue the armed group Boko Haram in the country's northeast will be the fifth since Nigeria returned to civilian rule in 1999. Delays and technical problems were reported at the start of the election, mainly in Kano, the biggest city in the country's north. On another note, at least two people were reportedly killed in suspected Boko Haram attacks on polling stations in northeast Nigeria. Boko Haram leader Abubakar Sheko had warned in a video message last month that the militants would disrupt the election, which they see as un-Islamic. Somali troops have taken full control of a hotel that extremist gunmen stormed and occupied for more than 12 hours following a suicide bombing. At least 17 people died and dozens were wounded as a suicide bomber detonated his explosives-laden car at the gate of the Makka al mukarrama Hotel in the capital Mogadishu. There was no immediate indication of how many of the dead were attackers, all of whom were killed according to officials. Somalia's ambassador to Switzerland was reportedly among those killed in the attack. A Shabab and Al-Qaeda linked Islamist extreme, extremist group that has carried out many attacks in Somalia claim responsibility for the assault on the hotel, which is popular with Somali government officials and foreigners. Italy's top court has cleared Amanda Knox of the 2007 murder of British student Meredith Kircher, bringing an end to the eight-year legal drama. Judges at the Court of Cassation on Friday also cleared Knox's Italian ex-boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, after 10 hours of deliberations in Rome. Knox said she was tremendously relieved after her acquittal. Um, well, I prefer not to answer questions. I just, I, I just wanted to say that I'm incredibly grateful for what has happened, for the justice I've received, for the support that I've had from everyone, from my family, from my friends, to strangers, to people like you. I, it, you saved my life, and I'm so grateful, and I, I'm so grateful to have my life back. Um, thank you, and that's, that's, that's all I can say. I'm, right now, I'm still absorbing what all of this means and the what what comes to mind is my my gratitude for for the life that's been given to me and what does the future hold for you now i don't know i'm i'm still absorbing the present moment which is full of joy thank you and for today now for a reminder of our top stories Arab leaders gather in the Egyptian resort town of Shadm sheikh to discuss the crisis in Yemen, where Saudi-led coalition troops are pressing ahead with airstrikes on Houthi targets. Heavy bombings shake the Yemeni capital Sana'a for a third consecutive day. At least 54 dead are reported. And former Prime Minister Saad Hariri reacts to Hezbollah chief Said Hassan Nasrallah's speech saying Lebanese are treated to a storm of hatred against Saudi Arabia and Gulf states in response to the decisive campaign launched against the Iranian infiltration in Yemen. Those are your top stories for today. I'm Lina Tamim, wishing you all a very nice weekend. Don't forget to change your clocks tonight. Thank you.